Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're going to talk uh, first before we start our painting about the abstract we did last week and uh, we're going to compare it to a gentleman's face that we have on the other side. We've got Herman on, on my left and the abstract on the right and I really wanted to talk today before we started about people say well I don't understand abstract um, I, I don't know what you were doing and basically the way I see it and the way that I was approaching it is if, if you look at this abstract here um, when you when you look at atoms and molecules uh, you look at things on the mo molecular level and you look at them up close they vibrate and there's a lot of energy going on so if you really zoom into this abstract you can see the swirling and the energy that's going around and it, things are just flying and if you saw the last show um, it really was a high energy painting so there really is no difference if you look at the way I do a stroke here here and here there really is no difference between how I do those strokes and if you come over here to look at Herman's face um, now, Herman would be a good sport <laughs> to have me compare his face to an abstract. But if you look at this stroke of the eyebrow, that's very similar to the gold, the thick gold paint that was put right here. So, this, the, you know, you look at eyebrow there, stroke like that. If you zoom in on Herman's face and really get a close up and you get to the point where there's no boundaries, I mean, you really get in close and look at his cheek or his nose, just, just totally hone in on his nose. You lose all sense of, of scale and proportion. You don't know where you are. It's got the same shapes that I have in the abstract. So basically, when I'm doing something like Herman or a face, the strokes and the, the painting is contained. There are boundaries. So there are boundaries within a cheek or an eye or a nose or something like this. Basically, I would say my abstracts are just zooming in as close as you can. There are no boundaries. Maybe if this painting was five times larger, it might have actually taken on some sort of shape, but that's where I was with that. So the way that I p apply the paint and put things down are pretty much the same, whether I'm painting something that's representational or something that's abstract. So it, it's, it's the same either way. Um, what I really like about the one that we did uh, in the last show is that it, it really is indicative of all the energy that was going on in the studio. And so when you're home painting and you've got that kind of energy, it's great to just go ahead and, and put it out there on the canvas. So now what we're going to do is get started in an urn. And uh, so we'll, we'll first take a look at Herman while we get our palette together. And, uh, Again, zoom in on some of those little areas there. I don't know if you can see, but let's look at his nose. I like how you can kind of grab his nose. Now today, when we start painting this urn, the thing that I'm really most concerned with today is making things look three-dimensional. Now with Herman's nose, this is a flat surface, yet you look like you can grab it and tweak his nose. And that's because there's, a, there's a, a light, medium, and dark area, and that's what gives the, the nose form. Same thing with his cheeks and the rest of his face. And we're going to do that on a, a simpler scale with the urn. So what you're doing with what you're painting on the urn is the same as how you would make him have form. It, it, it all works in the same principle. It, it's not um, dependent on the subject matter. So. What I'm going to do is start sketching out this urn. It's actually, it's not really technically an urn. It's more of a biscotti jar. Um, but I like the shape of it. I'm going to go ahead and get a rough drawing in. Now the palette that I'm using today, I'm using titanium white. Uh, you know, I, I've got 13, 14 colors here today. I've got <laughs> lots of stuff going on. I've got quinacridone violet, perylene scarlet, Cad Red Light. I've even got a Quinacridone Sienna. Uh, Indian Yellow. We talked about that last month. Cad Yellow Light. Cad Yellow Deep. You can see that all these are very warm fall colors. A yellow Ochre. Uh, we've got Sap Green. 
and uh, a new new green that I'm playing with it's green gold and a carbazole violet I don't have any blues out here today I thought about um, putting down a, a fallow turquoise and I didn't do it if I have it handy I may I may do that but I didn't bring it you know what the whole thing is just going to be really warm So again, why am I using purple to um, kind of get this drawing in? Uh, it's just because it's a, a fairly neutral color and I like it. You, so you could use any color that you choose. I want to get this. And you know what? This brush is just, uh, I didn't realize this before, but it's, it's too frayed. So I'm going to get something that's got a little more edge to it to get this thing sketched out. Time for me to get new brushes. I know it doesn't look like that with the number of brushes that are, uh, yeah, you know what? Someday we ought to have a contest. You guys can email me. Whoever guesses the right amount of uh, brushes, I'll give you a free DVD. Now, this jar had a lot of pattern on it. And if you've watched this show before, that's too much going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's too much going on. It would just make me tired to put in all that pattern. I thought about it, but uh, it's too busy for me, so I took it out. I think one of the hardest things about drawing something like this is making the shape equal on both sides. Now, I can tell right now that this isn't quite equal, and so I'm going to go ahead and just make it a little more symmetrical on this side. This is a good rough drawing. It's got a portrait orientation. I mean, normally when you do a composition, one of the rules is not to put something dead center. And I put it dead center. And I wanted it that way. <laughs> wanted it that way. Now how I'm going to offset that, make it a little more interesting, is that I'm going to put some different color in the background and break up the space in the background so that you can see it's not just a, a bullseye kind of look. Okay. Got that roughed in. One of the ways you could make this even and I thought about doing that before I came, but that would just be too perfect. Is, uh, when you were a kid and you cut out hearts in school, and you'd cut out one side of it, and then you'd unfold the piece of paper and it would be symmetrical on both sides, well, you could actually draw on a piece of uh, paper half of the urn and then unfold it and it would be, you know, cut it out and it would be exactly the right size. But I figured, we'll just, you know, I'm not going to, if I get something too perfect in the drawing stage, then I'm always trying to paint around it. So I figure you get a good rough sketch in and then see what we can do about it. But that is one way to do it. I do admit, though, to get these lines square, you can tell I've used this T-square a lot. And, um, you know, I'm not above just putting this down and, and getting the lines straight. Because, it, you know, it looks funny if they're off. So I'll definitely use a straight edge when I need it. It's actually getting to the point where, you know, I don't always wipe the paint off, so it's, it's not quite a straight edge. I need to get a new one. Okay, so we've got the basic drawing in. I'm going to start in the background, because I can cover a lot of space fast. And I th I'm thinking... We'll do a nice, cool, relatively cool sap green on the bottom. I'm lifting this up so that I can paint down here. And I'm just going to put in one solid color first just to get it covered. Later we'll see what we want to do with it. And it depends on how far we get in the show what, what happens with the rest of this. I'm using a lot of medium, so I just want a thin coat. real thin coat.
Right now it looks pretty flat. And that's because we only have one color in white. I'm still in a fall color palette, so, so it's going to be a lot of this red, red, greens. Looks like falling leaves. I'm going to grab some of this perylene scarlet. It's a nice transparent red. It's good for glazing in the background. You, I pretty much used it on that whole painting back there. I will probably tone this down a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to need to. It's a little bright. Because I want, I, I'm going to want the urn to, to take center stage and not the background. And believe it or not, I'm not making the urn red. It's going to be a golden color. Yellows are one of the, the most, um, most recognized by the human eye. They, they come forward the most. So if you want something to stand out and be, if I were to put gold in the background, I'd have to really mute it because it would try to come forward and would be fighting with the background as far as what was going to be in front. And I, I, don't like, I don't like it when my colors fight with each other. Every once in a while I do that on purpose, but that's, um, that's to get a certain area to pop. For the most part, they've got to be nice to each other. So this red and this green are looking happy. Again, later I can clean up my little straight line with the straight edge. This is going to be redder, but I'm going to mix that with a little doxazine or carbazole violet. The terms are usually interchangeable. So I'll mix the violet with some of this red. It's a nice dark color, but I think it's a, it might be a little too cool. I have to see how that's going to look against some of those yellows. It might not be happy. Ooh, I might add a little yellow ochre because that's the colors I was, was using were transparent, and I want something that's going to be a little more opaque. Yeah, that's better. It's also a nice, fairly neutral red. Did I make enough? No. Got to make a lot more. I'm not even paying attention to how much I put in before. Because um, I might come up with a better color. Ooh, that is a better color. That's gorgeous. You notice I don't, I don't usually have browns on my palette. I like to mix my own. That's a nice mahogany color. I like it when that happens. Okay, new brush, new color. Yeah, that's nice. I will probably need to change this red. I can see because it's not it's not going to cooperate with that, but I'm going to wait until I cover the canvas to see what I need to do. You can tell it's a good painting session when I already have it's this early and I already have paint all over my arm. That's good. Sometimes I'm painting and I'll have to go to the door, the UPS man comes and I've got paint up my nose. I don't even know it till I go back in the studio. <laughs> they never say anything either. They just kind of look at you funny. Yeah, that's a nice background. This is a 24 by 30 canvas, a lot smaller than what I normally do. For many people, it, it's actually a big canvas. 
awesome, but this is a good study size for me. I'm going to use some more medium. Otherwise, the whole show would be painting background. It would take too long to scrub that in. Well, if you've been watching the show a long time, you know that I usually hear music in my head when, uh, when I'm painting. And the last show, we had uh, all those Russian folk songs. And um, this show, it's Super Chicken. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys have ever watched Super Chicken, but that's what's going through my head right now. for this is not necessarily today to get a finished painting, but to get some form so that it's not this flat little thing. Okay, I like, I like this. This is a nice neutral background. The green on the bottom is okay. This I don't like, and um, <laughs> it's, I'm torn. Do I go ahead and mess with it now, or do I wait till I start putting the urn in? And I think what I need to do is get the canvas covered first because sometimes I fix things that aren't broke um, too early. So if I cover the canvas first, then I can see what, what's working and what's not. So now you can systematically and scientifically make a, an object have form. Right now it's totally flat. And the way you can do that is you need to have a dark, medium, and light, light area. So. I have to determine where the light source is. And I, I'm going to put it off to the side a little bit. I'll put it maybe, maybe right in here. So this is all going to be light, medium, dark, a little bit of dark hair. And that will give the whole thing some form. Uh, I'm going to start with some yellow ochre. I think you need a lot more than that. And there's a lot of difference. I, I, I ran out and got a different brand of yellow ochre and was really disappointed. It was a, it was a it was, a, it was a reputable brand, but it was a lot lighter, and uh, it had a lot more, kind of like meatballs. It had too much filler and not enough pigment. Now, when I make meatballs, it's not, it's not all bread. That's how paint should be. Pigment. Okay, that's a nice color, and that's going to be sympathetic. That's a nice dark going to be sympathetic to the background color because I used some of it. Okay, that's good. I probably didn't make nearly enough, so I'm just going to grab the whole pile. So I'm mixing yellow ochre and whatever that mahogany mix was. Now yeah, that's nice. I like a caramel apple color. Okay. Where would it be dark? When you when you uh, making stuff up out of your head, you have to think about what what a thing does when light hits it. And I I spent a lot of time spacing out about what. <laughs> what things do and it's a good thing it's helped me <laughs> help me know where to put the light and dark places okay so under under this rim would be dark and it looks like this is kind of a little dark place in here this would definitely be dark under the t top of this little finial I'll need a skinnier brush because there's no way I'll be able to paint that like that. And then this side is going to be dark. You know, I've got the basic shape in, but I'm, um, I'll clean it up later. This is dark. 
This whole side is going to be kind of dark. In fact, it's be dark over here too. So that's dark. This is going to be just on the edge dark. that edge too. Alright. And then I'll get another brush and put in where some of the other darks are. Okay. I used that I picked up that same brush that I that I hated before. I'm throwing it out right now. That's better. If it, you know, if your brush has lost its edge, you're just hurting yourself unnecessarily trying to get it to work. So throw them out. Now this is not symmetrical at all. I I could check the square to see if it's at least lined up here. Not really. So I'll see what I can do. At least, at least it's going to be in the same place. That's close enough. I don't usually have an audience on this side of me when I'm painting, but I look over there and there's Herman and he's like jumping off the jumping off the canvas there. It's a little disconcerting. When I first got him done, I had to take him to the photographer. I had him riding around in the trunk for a day or two. And I had great fun telling everybody that I had Herman in the trunk. He's been a good sport. Okay, I think there's dark hair too. Whether I'm going to do a pattern there, I don't know. I like things pretty simple. Okay, there's, that's a dark. Now I'm going to make like a medium dark. So I'll move this mix over, give myself some room to mix. And you know what, I need some more yellow ochre. I do not squeeze from the bottom. Can you tell? <laughs> it's a good thing to knead this before you squeeze it out so you don't get too much oil. They do tend to separate. Yeah, pretty much what happens because I, I just grab it and squeeze it out on the palette is that periodically I get a tube bringer and actually tidy them all up and I'll do that and then, then they all get misformed and I just let them get like that and do it again. Okay, so some straight, maybe some straight yellow ochre. My nice little mixes are going away. Yeah, that's a nice, nice color. Okay. A little bit of yellow there. Doing some subtle blending, just kind of rough blending. Need a little smaller brush for that area. Not sure where the light's hitting that, so I'm thinking in the middle. You know what, on these handles, it's going to be actually easier to overstate the light and sneak up on the dark than the, than the way that we're painting the rest of this. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I'll take some white, mix it with a bit of probably Indian yellow because it's the strongest yellow I have. And I'll put those in the middle. Got to find a good little skinny brush for that. Probably hard to see that. Doesn't look like much of a difference, but it will. In these early stages, it does tend to get blended out. Okay. Now I think what I'll do is, since I've got the light started, I'll, I'm switching gears. Normally I, it's a little more systematic, but you know, I start out that way. I'm going to go ahead and put a lot of the light here so that I don't tend to um, forget it. But basically what happens is I might not have enough room left to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. That way it's easier to go over the top of white than it is to add that over something that's dark. Especially when you're in a situation like this where I'm trying to get it all done in one shot. Need a totally clean brush for this. White with a little bit of yellow, Indian yellow. And, uh, yeah. See, you know, you can see that abstract, it is still exploding. It's my new favorite painting. Somebody was asking me, well, how can you tell what's art or what's good art? And that is such a personal question. And um, I don't feel like I'm qualified to speak for anybody else. I, I can only tell you if, if it hits my soul, if it's something that really speaks to me, then then it's good art. And, um, and when I create pieces, whether they're abstract or representational, when they get an energy or a life of their own like that abstract does, then I feel like I've, I've succeeded with something. So when you're painting, if, if it comes from your heart, that's all that matters. Okay, I was making nice little tidy mixes and now um, I just totally contaminated that Indian yellow. Woof, that's a little bright. We'll see if that works. So we're getting racing stripes here. But the light pretty much hits everything. You know what, I don't know if we're gonna keep that little line there. I don't think I like that, that's just too much. Now this is a personal thing. You may, you may like a lot of pattern or something like that. I typically don't wear clothes with flowers all over them or lots of stuff going on. I like really just mellow, plain, pretty plain things. So if you, if you like a lot of pattern, then paint it, you know, go, go for it. I'm not saying that it's bad, it's just, just a preference that I have. Okay, I like that. And I was tempted to just grab some more of that yellow ochre, but I actually need to mix another color here. I might even add some white. That's nice.
You know, when I don't like something, I tell myself that I don't like it, but I'm also pretty, <laughs> pretty good about saying it's nice when it's nice. If it works, that's great. You got to be your own cheerleader. This is kind of telling my age, but I, you know, I, this reminds me of uh, things, things growing up in the in the early '60s. Um, some of the colors and in and, and the state that this is right now, while it's still flat, a lot of the designs, maybe not, not necessarily the color scheme of this, but the, the designs were very flat, very um, stylized. And that's not where I'm going to end up with this, but that's what it reminds me of at this point in time. Like fractured fairy tales. <laughs> Think of the design on fractured fairy tales. That's what we got going on here very influenced by the surroundings. Okay, can you guys hear that music? Is, I mean, is, there's got to be people out there that are old enough to know what the Fractured Fairy Tale song sounds like. Now that's going to be stuck in my head. And the little man with the broom. And if you haven't seen Fractured Fairy Tales, well, you got you got to look them up because they're good. Okay, this is starting to get a little bit of form. I might be able to just scoot this over and blend it. It's kind of a cheating way. Okay, I think I'm going to get rid of that. I was talking about getting rid of that line, and I will. I don't like it. And that needs some ochre here. You know, the interesting thing is that uh, several years ago, I'd be painting and I'd actually forget to put yellow out on my palette. So there, I think people go through stages of, of different colors that, that uh, speak to them at a certain time. Right now, these fall colors are really hitting me. And I can't believe I'm using this much yellow. Okay, I might start blending a little bit just to see where we're at and to see how I can make this thing start to pop. When you blend, it's really, really good to, uh, first of all, I think I'll get, get a clean brush and to use a paper towel and wipe constantly. So you got to hold the paper towel in your hand and uh, blend and wipe so that you're not stuck with this, you're not moving the paint over into an area where you don't want it. I'm blending a little harder here where I'm trying to get rid of that line that I don't want. In fact, I'm not going to commit to any of these little lines till the end. Still have the fractured fairy tale song in my head. I hope you're trying this stuff at home. I'm blending this all the way into the background so that you can't tell where the edges are, and that you know you don't want to commit till the end. I'm staying out of that white area because that's dangerous right now. 
<clears throat> All right, now now I gotta I gotta do something about it. So, yo, there was there was fuzz there. So I'm gonna take the knife and scrape that off. Lost a brush hair. Some some little little brush hair here and there I don't I don't mind, but that was too much. Okay. See I'm losing my white. I did what I didn't want to do. Even when I talked to you about not doing it in the first place. So you can be conscious of something and still say, whoops, but I'm stopping myself before I go too far. I'm going to add a little more white, a little more yellow, and see what I can do. Although it's not looking like um, Herman's nose yet, it is starting to take some shape and not look as flat. Okay, somehow I, I picked up another color and I know I'm gonna be in trouble if I leave it there. One of the hardest things about using yellow and making form with yellow is that if you think about, if you look at yellow on the palette and you look at it against white, yellow is a light color. It's not dark. So, so there's not a lot of value contrast between the darkest dark hair and the lightest light hair. So yellow's, yellow's a, a bit funny to work with. I'm going to add some purple to compensate for that. Do I want to keep this line? That's kind of hard to get rid of over the white, but I'm going to work on it. So far, all the blending has been just a very straight up and down motion. And if you notice Herman's face or the abstract things, they usually tend to get all, I start scribbling. We're getting close to the scribbling stage. I'm scrubbing out some of the pencil lines that I drew. Don't want those to show. I'm blending out some of the, some of the good stuff. Sometimes. You know, you can't get too attached to it in the beginning. Um, there, it, sometimes it's a shame because I will have done this just really incredible stroke, but it's too early on to have that stroke. It, it, you know it's got to be covered up later, and you can't paint around it. That would hurt the painting. So there are times when you have to kill something that's beautiful. I hate that, but, but it's necessary. You can't get too attached to that early. You can, but it would just be, you'd screw up your painting. You'd have to kill it sometime, so you might as, you know, if you are going to have to kill it, you might as well just kill it right away. I'd rather get it over with. Well, this handle's just uh, making me tired. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of squirrely. We'll see what happens here. I think I just over blended the whole thing. That may be one of those that I let dry and fix later. Need some yellow hair. I'm leaving the white in the center. I'm trying to. It's really hard when it's this wet.
I might just I might just over blend this side on purpose too. At least they'll be consistent. And then decide what I'm gonna do with that. Yeah. I've talked about this before too. If you have an area of a painting that's not working or that's making you tired, um, it's, it's your job to direct people to look at the good stuff. So if you have something that's not working, well downplay it. Put it in the background, put it in the shadows, put it somewhere where, where it's not, not going to be standing out like a sore thumb. Now, if it's the center of interest, well, then you better keep working because <laughs> you got to make that work. What am I doing now? I'm blending the edges. And now, now that we've got the canvas covered, you've got a slight, slight sense of form. It's not real formy yet. Um, that must be a new word, formy. It's got a good sense, but it, I have the whole canvas covered, so I need to decide what am I going to do with this thing. Well, this is working with the background here. That red is like way too much. Never thought I'd say that, but it, it really is. Um, what am I going to do to tone it down? I ugh, I hate toning down red. <laughs> so I really like it. I'll just add a different red. <laughs> Because I still want to keep that. I think I need to. Uh, ooh, I could do that. Uh, yeah, this is a different red. It's still going to be lighter. I don't want it to be the same color as the uh, urn, which it is. Um, that was not intentional. Okay, that's nice. That's better. I'm, I don't know if you can see, and if you can't, I'm moving out of the way. Um, but when I'm blending this, I'm not just painting, we've talked about this, taking the, the brush and, and running away from the object. You don't want to do that. Just go ahead and go into it and clean up your edges later, even into the green up into the handle, wherever you need to go to get it covered. I still like this division of space back here. It adds a little more interest than just the flat background. And also it's a nice geometric area against an organic shape. Okay, so now the, the back, I like that. See, I'm starting to scribble now. I'm getting happy. That, that's when the painting is fun. I don't like it when you have to be too careful. That's just not fun. Okay, well, I think, you know, you need a little bit of this light, lighter red over here just to be sympathetic. It's a happy sound. You know, I'm going to have to tape that. Sometimes there, you know, you get a room full of people painting and, and you have a symphony of brush, brushes hitting the canvas. Just a happy thing. Unless they're not happy with the painting and you hear them cussing at it, but for the most part it's a good thing. Okay, so that's, that's tied in together better. I'm going right over the handle here. Because you know what? I wasn't committed to that shape yet anyway. I still don't have the drawing right. OK. Now, what a difference that made. That pushed the background back. Um, the earnest is much forward, much more forward than it was. I can enhance that by really adding some more dark and basically the middle values are pretty good the lights got to be lighter don't know if I can do it when it's this wet but I'll try 
and um, these edges have to be slightly darker. So how am I going to do that? Well, I might pick up some of the green from the background here and add a little bit of the green to the edges here, because if I just add more red, it's more of the same. I don't want more of the same. So um, I'm going to try some green. And worst case is I don't like it, and I paint over it. But see, by adding some of the green in here, see, now, that, OK, this is a good example. See how I just started squiggling all this right here? That's exactly what I was doing in that abstract over there. I was just squiggling. Same thing with Herman's face. Yeah, I like that green. That's good. OK, well, let's see. Under hair, this is going to be darker. See, the initial strokes were basically up and down. I was just trying to keep things in a certain thing. Now, if you go against the form, that helps create the roundness. So um, by I'm going to actually just shove some white over the top and kind of just like that abstract, just like this, and that will help it expand. Hopefully it's not, I could have used another big brush. Hopefully I will have. It might be too muddy, but I'm going to try. What do I mean by muddy? Well, it's, it's got not enough clean space for some white paint to go. And I'm not just talking about the palette. <laughs> I'm talking about the painting. I also need some more medium. Okay. Well, Super Chicken's back in the head. Gone are the fractured fairy tales. Yeah, that, you know what? You, you put it on thick enough, you can get, get this highlight going. This canvas is just wonderful. I don't know if you can hear this drum. This, um, it's, it's got really good spring, so there's nice interaction with it. If you've ever painted on wood or something that doesn't give, it's, it's a totally different experience. OK. So first I went up and down. And then, as I promised, I'll start scribbling. get back and look at it. Yeah, that's start, starting to get a little shine going there. That's happy. OK. But I think I have to leave it alone, or I'm going to um, basically, I, I had a teacher <laughs> tell me I was I over blended. And, and that can happen very easily. So. Um, I can tell I need to leave it alone. So that green was nice, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough. So I'm going to add back some of the violet that we started with. And I'm using carbazole violet. It's also known as doxazine purple. Same thing, usually. I am going to have to do address these handles. Um, I like that little shape there. Let's see what, if I can, uh, oops. It's getting some form. It would be dark under here where it meets. Just think of the places where light doesn't hit. <laughs> where the sun doesn't shine. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, you know what? That's working. It's a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to scribble a little here. I've really not addressed the top of this at all. And um, can't have that. This little finial. And also, it looks like it's floating, so I'll need to add a little dark there. And that's the other thing. I'll, I'll, I get my square out and check and see, okay, am I even on the bottom? I, am I halfway close? Because sometimes my eye, uh, it, it may look like it is, but my, my palette's not level. So this just takes a lot of, the, and I turned it sideways because it's the only way I have the room. I'll just draw a little reference line. Oops. <laughs> I think I painted more on the square than I did on the canvas, yeah. Anyway, that, that, that shows me that I was a little bit off, and I can fix that. And if you wipe this right away, ooh, it's starting to glow. Um, if you wipe this right away, you don't get a paint buildup. It might be stained, but you don't get the buildup. OK. What can we do in the last segment of the show to make it really pop? Well, we'll add a little more purple hair. Definitely have to keep it from floating. I suppose I could address, you know, I think the, the base is just way it's way too light. That's what it is. So I'm going to take some of this green, some of this purple on this last little part that we have. And I lifted the canvas up so I can get right under there. OK, if the light was shining here, it could, yeah, I think what I'll do at the end is maybe have the light hitting just in this upper portion and, um, and pretend. I mean, it's your painting, so you can pretend and do whatever you want. That um, that's dark down here. Now, why is it dark down here? Because you, you could play and make a nice shadow and do all that, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> so, so I'm going to make it dark down there, uh, like we were talking about directing, so that we don't we don't need to really worry about this area. And I can just see you now. Every time you look at one of my paintings, go ah, she didn't feel like painting there. Well, that's not always the case, but sometimes it is. It's what, what is important to you? What, what section, what do you want to bring out? What's your center of interest? What are you trying to say in your painting? I don't, um, my paintings don't have political statements. I, I, I really do it just just as a thing of beauty or just to express myself, but I'm not, I don't have any political motivation. So somebody asked me what, you know, what they mean. And I said, diddly, <laughs> they don't, <laughs> they mean whatever they feel to you, but, um, but they don't have, I don't have any ulterior motives. Yeah, I like that because that takes a lot of the focus from down there. You know, we're getting toward the end of the show, and I could actually even up this little line here, but I'm not going to do that because that would take too much time. I really just need want to take a look at this and say, okay, how can I get this to even a, a more finished state? Now, in, you know, in three minutes, it's not, not real easy to get it further than it is. But I would say I would put dark hair. And I added more green. But you know what? We probably didn't have enough red in this urn. And um, I'm going to add some. So you start to see that abstract coming out with this little red. Oh, that's gorgeous. Couldn't have planned that. 
Okay. It's even starting to get more form, and I think if I were just to go, you know, slash it a little bit, kind of like the blue lady, it would add just a little more character. Yeah, I'm starting to get back. That's getting a lot more interest, although I just killed, killed the highlight, and um, I will add that back in. I hope, if anything, that, that you're trying this at home, that you're um, not afraid to just put the paint down, get started. Paint what you like. And if you don't like these colors, Use, use the colors that you like. I mean, my palette is just a reference so that you'll know how I achieved what I was getting. Um, but use whatever colors feel good to you. Um, just, just pick a, a blue, a red, a green, and a white and get started. Just put it down. Um, I didn't start painting till I was in my 30s. So if I can do this, you can do it. So if, if you've learned anything tonight, it's to um, go out and express yourself and just, just put the paint down and have fun. Thanks for watching.